Hello everyone, it's Tana. Welcome back to my channel. We're going to jump right in here using the Lobsters for Life stamp set from the April release. And as you just saw, I already have colored my images. And that was using a cross of combination of Zig markers and my uh, Derwent in Inktense watercolor pencils. So here I want to show you, do not waste the ink in your, ink, your blending brushes. If you must wash them, which I don't do often. I would suggest doing this first. So all I did was squirt some water on my little brush scrubber there. And just that bit of water can bring out so much ink out of your blending brushes. And I decided I wasn't going to waste it. So I made some ink panels here, some ink smushing panels. And you'll notice I only uh, cleaned out the teal and blue brushes because I was trying to go for a ocean background scene. So the panel I liked the most was going to be the winner on this. I did attempt to use acetate for ink smushing. Sometimes it works better for me, sometimes not so much, especially when there's a lot of water. So I tried it a, di a few different ways as you can tell here. Sorry for my scratchiness, I'm still a little sick, which is no surprise considering it's still cold here. I don't know what I was thinking with this panel because it kind of turned out not pretty. So you'll probably never see me use that blue and green combination one. Uh, some of the smaller ones turned out pretty as well, but I was looking for more of a slimline sized card. So I did dry between each color. And there are my panels there. And I used a combination of watercolor cardstock, um, Stonehenge Hot Press, Canson watercolor, and even a couple pieces of Bristol Smooth. So here I chose my panel and I'm adding some droplets of water to it so it looks like bubbles in the ocean. And I did that twice and then kind of blotted them off with a paper towel and then used my heat tool to heat set those. Now I'm going to use a stencil from my stash to kind of make a sand, the sandy floor at the bottom of the ocean. I didn't like the way it looked over the blue ink, so I end up using it as a marker to cut that off of the panel. Took another piece of watercolor cardstock and went in with my Catherine Pooler Inks Sandcastle icing on the cake and over coffee. And you, the blotchiness was on purpose because I was trying to make the sand look like different colors. I did not fully achieve the effect I was going for, so you'll see me go in with some um, brown Copic markers in a second here. I used the smaller blending brushes for the first two colors and then went over the entire thing with a bigger blending brush using Sandcastle. So now, this is when I decided I was going to follow the blotchiness and start going over in some areas to make dots that would look like sand. Now I do have sand embossing powder, but I didn't, I didn't want my sand looking shiny, seeing as how it's at the bottom of the ocean. So I went with this look instead, and I like the way that it turned out in the end. And after I'm all done with the markers, we're going to cut both of these out. We're going to cut this one off of its bare panel, and we're going to cut the other one off of the ocean panel, and we're going to combine them. So when you guys comment, let me know what your weather's been like. I'd love to hear of warm weather, but just let me know what you, the weather's been like where you live. So here I'm going to cut this portion of sand off and I honestly I don't know why I bothered I was trying to make it even so I had a one layer card but I ended up placing my other sand over the, the bottom where I trimmed it anyway because I wanted more of the sand to show so that didn't really matter I kind of wasted my time on that now I'm just tracing where I want it to go so I know where to put the glue 
and then I'll carefully set that into place and let that dry as well and trim off the excess. So I have four pretty clamshells with pearl rings inside. I did go over them with glossy accents, the pearls, but I ended up using, as you'll see at the end, iridescent bubbles to put over that instead. And I do like the way that looked. I'm going to, at this point, adhere my panel to the card base. And then I'm going to pop our bride and groom up there in the center with foam tape. And I had to make a blue lobster, guys. They're so rare and they're so pretty. The bride just had to be blue. And I placed it so that it looked like they were holding hands. And this is the point where I went in with the gloss or um, crystal, nouveau crystal glaze. I'm sorry, not glossy accents. And I was letting that dry. Time for the sentiment. I'm using my rabbit hole powder tool there and stamping out lobsters for life. And we're going to heat set that with some clear embossing powder. I cut that out with a, a rounded edge sentiment strip. Pop that up on foam tape as well. Sorry for that ding, guys. Apparently my husband doesn't learn the lesson when I say, don't text me or call me, I'm doing a voiceover. Men never listen, do they? And now I'm adding some tiny iridescent pearls so it looks like bubbles are coming out of the clamshells. And then of course the larger iridescent pearls in the centers or gems in the center of the pearls. And that's it for the first card. Now moving on to the second card. I'm using my Catherine Pooler inks again and we're gonna use the mesh optical stencil for this one. And I'm gonna go over my entire panel with the serenade first. Then I'm going to place, and don't ask me why I tilted it, because in the end, it did not matter. But I tilted it, and then I added Catherine Pooler's pucker up over the stencil. And after I clean up my inky mess, we are going to reapply that stencil exactly where it belongs. And we're going to place some glass bead gel over this. Now I have used this before. It's been a while though. And I'm trying to do a thin, as thin a layer as possible so that it dries faster. But I did end up leaving it overnight anyway. And as you can see above there, I have my blooming anemone uh, flower swag all colored and ready to go. And that was done with zigs as well while I was in Florida. Take that off, clean up my area and let that dry. And it will dry translucent. So it will be clear and you'll be able to see the pink through it. But as you can see, it did lighten the pink just a little bit. It's really pretty up close, guys. I'm adding a light lilac panel behind that on a black card base. And the lilac kind of matches the flowers, the lighter purple flowers in the swag. And then I'm going to tilt this at an angle, the bead gel panel, and trim all the excess off. It was a little bit difficult. I think I next time would use my largest trimmer or my guillotine. But I just went in with my uh, Tim Holtz shears and trimmed off what didn't come off. And then we're going to place that floral swag down in the bottom right corner. And I'll trim all the leaves that hang off the edges. And I really had to set something heavy on that. With the glass bead gel, it had to have pressure on it until it fully dried. And then I used, I believe, Happy Anniversary on the same lilac cardstock. Trim that down and place that on the panel as well with some pink gems. And that's it for today's video, guys. I hope you like. Are you, I hope you liked everything you saw here today. Don't forget to join the Facebook group and Instagram as well. And I can't speak today. So you can be aware of all the inspiration throughout the month for each new release. And we'll see you next time, guys. Bye-bye for now.